Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest tonight is a man who is very well known to all of you. He has served 11 years on his own chat show for the BBC. He has been sojourning in Australia for the last several months, doing what in the name of God on Australian television, I do not know, but we'll find out. And he is also associated with the upcoming soon in Britain, Breakfast Television. Go on, go ooh and ah. Let's have a welcome for Mr. Michael Parkinson. How are you? How well you are looking. Thank you, sir. In fact, they never believed this, but I haven't laid eyes on him before the show. He arrived too late. Where were you, for heaven's sake, all that time? Oh, I was doing a bit of publicity and bit wandering bit around and having a nice mm. lunch at Bailey's and all that sort of thing. Well, for you, by Jove, you have the life. Australia, Australian television, life in Australia. Talk to us. Oh, it's, a, it's a huge subject. Uh, it's, it's great. I mean, I love it. Um, it's a, it's very interesting going to Australia. You know, it's such a, a long, long way away that when you get there, you, it's like being on another planet, and everything that worries you in Europe and everything that bothers you in in Britain disappears. And the Australians have a phrase for it. They call it the tyranny of distance. It might be a tyranny for them, which is why so many come over here. But it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a soothing ointment to anybody who's going out that way. I find it that way. I mean, I wouldn't want to live there. I wouldn't want to just change my lifestyle. But to go there three or four months in the year is marvellous. Rough, tough people. Well, up front, and I think it, it helps if you're if you're North Country, you know, because the, the the attitudes I grew up with are very much the attitudes I find in the street there. And sure, if you back down in front of it, you know, if you give up, mm. then they'll trample all over you. But if you front up to it, they're very hospitable, nice people. There's a certain kind of Englishman they don't like, and I don't blame them, because I, I don't like him either. And he's that kind of colonial Englishman with brown knees and, and white calves, you know, where the socks have been, where there's <laughs> long shorts, and speaks to the terrible sort of posh accent, you know, who still treats the Australians. There are very few and far between, I must admit, but as, as, as you know, they... The racist treats the black. I mean, he will say things like the Austrian, of course, he's got longer arms and a smaller brain and all that sort of nonsense. <laughs> and that's the kind of pom that they hate. And as I say, that's a shared hatred because I don't like him either. Australian television, Mike, you were doing your own chat show there. Yes. And uh, how good or bad is it? How do you rate it? Oh, <laughs> it's, well, you know, I, I think I've, I've worked for the best television service in the world. I mean, I think once you've worked for the BBC, then you've played in the first division. Mm. And I think that any other television, no matter where you go, is by comparison second division. So I'd say it's second division. But it's, it's fairly high second division. You're being diplomatic, aren't I'm being you? very diplomatic, Gabriel. Yes. Absolutely so. I mean, the one thing that I don't like to I'll be very frank and utter frankly to you about all things, except I hate criticising television services, the game I'm in, and I hate criticising fellow pros. Mm. I don't go in for that at all. Yes, well, that's diplomacy as oh, well. Oh, I talk about you freely and frankly. Do you? Well, I would, because we you and I used to work together, didn't oh, we? Oh, indeed. When I got your first in Granada, you couldn't do a thing. Now look at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 20, what? 21 you, years oh, ago. don't tell them. As long as the show. As long as the show. You've weathered it well, old sunshine. Oh, thank you, Scott. You're not looking too badly yourself. You still go out and pray before a show. I know things about this guy that I wouldn't dare tell Now, him. Now, so does Jimmy Savile. Mm. Um, now, um, why didn't you go to America? That intrigued me. I, I haven't actually talked to him. I actually about that don't like the standards of American television. And by that, I don't mean the quality of their programmes, although I could talk a long time about that. I don't like the sort of um, the, the attitudes of the executive in, in, in American television. American television is full of people who can read a rating, but are struck dumb when you ask them what the show's like. I mean, they will say to if the ratings come out on a Wednesday, you do your show on the Saturday. You'll say after your show, how was it? And they'll say, wait till Wednesday. And that kind of judgment, I've never been able to stand. I really can't take that. Because I was brought up in a, in a, in a, in a, a broadcasting company, the name of the BBC, that actually didn't make programmes for money. It made programmes full stop for people. Uh, whereas, and that's the huge difference between that and the, and the American system. It's why the BBC is the best system in the world, certainly. So I couldn't take all that false judgment. Nevertheless, it is a measure of box office receipts. Well, I can earn as much money in Australia. I mean, and that's another point, and mm -hmm. I prefer going to Australia than America. Oh, you say it's a, you say it's a, it's a, a, a judgment of, of box offices. Sure it is. It's but not a judgment of quality, but it's a Absolutely so, and I'm more interested in quality than box office, mm -hmm. frankly. I mean, I think you can do the two. I mean, I think if you do a show like, like you do, or like I did, you're never ever going to get the soap opera audience, but you can get a hell of a respectable audience nonetheless. I mean, on my show in, in England, I mean, at times I got as high as 17 million people watching. 
That's a hell of an audience. Yeah. I mean, we've worked out a mean average over the years at 7.5 or 8 million people. Yeah. I mean, that's a big audience. I don't know why you say you can't get soap opera audiences. We do consistently for the past 21 years. But they've got nothing else to watch. Now, you must be joking. <laughs> They have, they have, 70% of our viewers can now receive the other channels. Well, I think, they're still I, th I think they've got tremendous judgment, don't oh. I think, I really do. Ah, gee, ain't he nice after all.